the splinters of a broken sun. We've made it to chapter 10, which is quite the accomplishment. I think you'll agree. Splinters of a Broken Sun is an actual play role-playing podcast using the Fate Core system set in an original and unique science fantasy fiction world. Joining me today is our cast of Chaotic Companions, starting with Keekers. Hi everyone, I'm Keekers, also known as Be a Space Cat on Twitter and various other websites. I play Keva Jarma, the wonderful pilot and just 100% done with this crap uh, star stuff. Yeah, she doesn't want to go out into space again anytime soon. Thank you. It was very concise. <laughs> We've also got with us OG Brown Sugar. Hello, everyone. I'm OG Brown Sugar, and I play Maeve Sentis, the mother of spiders, and a future overlord. There's that overlord again. It's so good. <laughs> and we've also got Salas Dreas. Howdy, everyone. I'm Salas Dreas, also known as Michael Blood, and I play Emron Pock on the podcast. Um, one day, I hope to punch the very stars. That I'm sure will go extremely well for you, depending on which definition of stars we are using. Celebrities. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Speaking of celebrities, we're also joined by the singing chemist. Hi, I'm the singing chemist. You might remember me from such motivational films as, hey, buddy, you can do it. And I am playing Zonin Chan, the intrepid hat maker. I've seen that movie at least once or twice. It certainly motivated me to do something. Good work, buddy. Speaking of motivation, you have all survived some bizarre encounters on the surface of the station. Space wits. Yes, first, though, you encountered a memory which was uh, a, as far as you could tell, sentient collection of memories that gave you memories of other people from before the emergency. Uh, it seems to have left a lasting impact on all of you because you all experienced some interesting things that are not part of your lives within the station. In fact, I think it may have broken some of you a little bit. But that's okay. Yeah, it was no not regrets. fun. To be fair, I asked for it. That is true. Uh, following your encounter with the memory, you also ran into, while you were working on fixing up those uh, solar panels so that Hub could have power, you ran into some kind of weird space squid thing that looked like it had been damaged, uh, but wanted to get into a bit of a tangle with you. And you were able to defeat it uh, at some cost, and now are on your way back to the borehole. What's it look like as the four of you are trekking across the surface? I don't want to do a whole big scene of it. But what's the, what's the feel? Uh, that the feel like of us walking across the surface together. Yeah. What is the, what's the shot that the audience sees as we open up this episode? Armageddon. Keva's like leading, but always looking back at everyone because everyone else kind of took a more of a hit than Keva did. And she's kind of like really not dealing with that. Well, mm -hmm. you know that Keva has the, if you hurt my friend, I'll hurt you uh, characteristic, but how do you, how do you deal with it when it's this kind of hurt? Yeah. And working from the inside didn't necessarily work very well. Did it? It, it caused a bit of friction, I think, a little bit of tension between you and Emran. Yeah. How is Emran doing? If we get a shot inside the spacesuit, Emran just still looks fairly... not entirely there yet, still. But, you know, starting to come out of it, he's, like, reading the heads-up display inside the helmet. He's being attentive. But uh, he does look a bit worse for wear because he had several nosebleeds trying to force electricity through the cables. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the you know psychological trauma. You know, seeing the emergency was probably the most scarring thing that's ever happened to him. And that's saying something. He certainly saw an emergency. Speaking of people who saw emergencies, how is uh, Maeve coping? 
pretty catatonic considering that, plus getting her leg busted. Uh, she's just fiddling with the display on the sensor and being flanked by her spiders. Okay. The spiders have come out onto the station? Oh, no, I thought we were back out of the borehole, in which case, no. I didn't want to push them into space. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know how much you've let on to the rest of the group yet, but your legs aren't working. So are you just relying on your jets, or is somebody, like, pulling you along like a kite? Oh, we're probably still doing the kite thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kev would be pulling her at this point now. Right. Uh, Zonin, you did not see an emergency, but you did see something that no one else ever has should have to. How are you? Uh, Zonin is still vis uh, visibly shook. Um, I don't think the concussion's helping much. But, uh, yeah, the, the light um, and energy that was once uh, found in his face is nowhere to be seen. Hmm. So it's sort of a procession of the uh, bruised and the bloodied limping your way, hop limping your way back towards the borehole. But you do eventually make it back past the skeleton of the ancient ship, past the hills and mountains. Uh, I am assuming that you do not go back through the tunnel where you met memory. Absolutely not. I don't want to make that call for you, but uh, it seems that Keva and Zonin don't want to go there. Yeah. Keva? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Maeve's in mobile anyway. She can't make that call. Mm hmm. Well, I. Well, Keva would still, like, make sure that she got an audible answer from, or uh, some sort of answer from. Uh, Emrin and Maeve because she'd be very like uh, tentative about that right now. Of course. Uh, Emrin, you're still dragging that piece of hull behind you, right? I sure am. I suffered okay. for it. You did. You did. All right. You make it back to the borehole and you can see that the uh, tattered remains of that flag are still sort of there um, fluttering ever so slightly in the uh, air that is constantly slowly escaping from the station all that distance above up the hole uh, but there you see there are still the ends of the spider silk there waiting for you what do you do uh <laughs> kevin's gonna be like okay everyone time to reattach our suits to these and start the Descent? Ascent? I think you mean reverse repel. Yeah, you gotta reverse your repel your way back up there. Yeah. yeah. The entire group will collectively reverse repel because there is no orientation in space. Yeah, it's the only thing that makes sense. Exactly. Good. <laughs> Alright, so the what you, what, what's, the, what's the signal? How do you get the spiders to start pulling you in? We'll just say in. Uh, Keva would ask me if she can do that. Like, communicate with them. Definitely. I, I'd reach out and hope that they were still there. You can sense them on the very edge of your perception. They are still there. But it is difficult to give commands at this range. You're very far from them. But they are, they're waiting there for you. So presumably... Beforehand, you set up some kind of, like, all two tugs to pull us in kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Have you, have you told the rest of the party about what's going on yet? Not yet. Good. Okay. I so got to nobody... figure out before I tell anybody. <laughs> so the spiders begin to draw you up. And as you go in through the borehole, you feel that still... You can feel it in your inner ear. It's very confusing to you as gravity shifts uh, from the very light gravity that was on the surface to an entirely different orientation of what is up and what is down as you go back up through the borehole. 
And during the journey, you know, you are rising up on these tethers and you can see those side tunnels that you explored before passing by. It's dark except for where you left uh, glow lights, but those are probably on their last legs by now, as it were, starting to fade out of their light as well. So it's sort of a dim experience as you go up through the rippled siding of the tunnel with the occasional glow passing over your faces inside of your suits. Is there any kind of conversation going on? Uh, I could see Keva, Keva being like a little like commenting on not anything about what's happened, but just the ascent or descent, however you want to say that. The pulling by the spiders. Just sort of like, mm-hmm. oh, be careful. You know, swing yourself that way. We don't want to clack together. A little bonking would be uncomfortable for sure. Is anyone responding to this? Or are you all just... Oh, and j- just to make a note, I did drag back the the squid corpse with us. Okay. How do you have that attached? I think I can probably tow cable that. Okay. So you've got, a, you've got the squid corpse and the hull plate dangling from you. They are heavy as gravity returns, but your, your suit is heavy enough to, your suit rather, is strong enough to lift them. The issue is that the uh, spider is struggling. So you can see that Emran's suit is beginning to fall behind a little bit. Since Keva is p- possibly lighter, could she like try to get her tether so that then the two spiders would be pull- like working together to also pull up the, the extra dead weight? Yeah, sure. You can do that. That will help to equalize the weight distribution. Uh, so now everyone's a little bit slower, but it's okay. You're going to make it back into the surface eventually. Uh, aside from Keva making the occasional comment, it's quiet then. Yeah, Emran doesn't really say anything unless directly asked a question. Mm-hmm. The sensor's just beep, beep, beeping. So it takes uh, a couple hours to get back in, but you eventually get there. You can see the temperature Uh, changing. It's not warm, obviously, as we discussed. It's still quite cold here. Bit of a tundra situation, and there's frost all around the edge of this. You can see that the spiders have some frost buildup on them as well, but uh, because they've been moving, drawing you back up, they are further away from the borehole, because they've all been walking away from the borehole to pull you up. And so some of the uh, frost has cracked off of them and fallen to the ground, but some of it is still on there. They seem to be okay, just frosty. You have made it back to the surface. I guess you're going to pull up that squid and that hull bit now, just behind you. Yeah, Emran will pick up some slack with the spiders and help them out. All right, with your help, it makes short work of it. And now you've got the hull plate lying on the ground and the squid corpse probably flopping on the ground too. Now, where did we park the ship? I can't remember. Was it just here? Yeah, really close by. Okay. The Express is there. Uh, Lights are on standby. And as you approach the Express, you see the walkway uh, automatically lowers with that hydraulic hiss uh, to allow you to board the ship. Emren pulls the squid and hull on board into the cargo bay. Okay. Uh, like you don't really have a cargo bay. There's the passenger area and the bridge, but uh, on the engines below. But uh, you could probably put it in the passenger area, seeing as you don't have passengers other than the spiders. I uh, I make sure that the the whole plate and the squid corpse are buckled in for safety. All right, you do so. The rest of you heading up to the bridge, or what do you want to do? I'm just gonna sit in the passenger area, <laughs> sullen. Mm-hmm. Emran will uh, step out of his suit. Okay. It opens up around you and allows you to step down to the floor. And uh, I'm just going to spend the trip back looking over the, like, determining that the the whole piece is, of course, like, made out of SGM, and then trying to look at the circuitry of the squid being. Okay. We can check in on that as we go. I'll join Emran in just doing busy work, but I'll, I'll just slump nearby in the suit. Okay. 
The spiders come in and sort of take up their previous positions. So that leaves Keva. Everyone else is in the passenger area, either sulking or busying themselves. Keva's like, just like, not, not good. <laughs> She's not like going to the ship, the front. She's like, just kind of looking at everyone and just like, you know, she can't, she can't, I, I don't know how to describe to someone, to people listening, how this feeling is exactly, but it's kind of uselessness. And um, if any of them looked at her, she'd be standing there and out of her suit and kind of like rubbing her hands together, not like kind of in a hand washing motion, like palm to back of hand, palm to back of hand. Mm -hmm. Just really like. Feeling lost. Yeah. And just, yeah. Okay. You see on the wall, one of the wall displays sort of comes up with a uh, question asking if you need to engage autopilot. I think Keva would say yes. Okay. The ramp raises, uh, cutting off the view of the sort of frosty tundra outside, and the ship lifts off. You can't feel too much on the inside, but uh, the ship helpfully turns sections of the walls transparent so you can see what's going on as you rise up into the air. The ship circles twice and then the Express 88 takes off directly back the way you came towards Hub. Are its lights on? Its regular running lights are on. So are those the lights people could see from outside? I mean, it's possible. It's not the glow of the force field, but they are Mm-hmm. lights it would be like uh, an airplane's lights so mm-hmm. you know you 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 could see them if you were looking hmm. when they take off and they're in the air for a little bit keva realizes that those might be visible and she freaks out and kind of snaps out of her own overload and goes up to the front of the ship and tries to connect to ask it to turn off any lights Okay. Uh, let's do your uh, r- rapport, I guess. <laughs> this is the last thing she needs right now. Mm. Okay. You'll need, I think, a fair roll for this. Oops. Sorry, that was the express. Yep, that's the ship. Uh, I did it on the Keva sheet and everything. When you, where you see as at the bottom there, does it say your character or the ship? Yeah, I, I, I just did. I just switched it, but you know. Okay. Oh, two. Okay, so that's good enough. The ship uh, acquiesces, and the 88's light, uh, running lights dim. It seems that the ship can't turn them off completely at this point. You get the sensation of anxiety, almost, almost fear, but mostly anxiety at the idea of turning off its running lights entirely. But they are very dim now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, she's just gonna hope that that's the be- like you know that's the best we could do right now. And she kind of slumps back into the uh, pilot chair, still connected. Okay. And I don't know. She. I guess she's probably gonna end up talking out loud to the ship. Okay. What does she say? We saw a lot of horrible things out there. Uh, the ship can't really talk to you, but you get uh, the sense of sadness, and you see the hollow display lights up in front of you with a sad face emoji. Ah, thanks, ship. It's hard. I guess is the best word for it. I can't. No matter what I do, I can't protect them. Not. Not completely, and even if I do, and they're not going to always let me. There's a question mark. 
you know, them, and she kind of motions back with her thumb, pointing back there. Gives you a thumbs up, but then another question mark, because it seems that's not what the ship was asking a question mark about. Oh. The... The last thing that you said you had said to the ship there was, they won't let me protect them, and then it had a question mark. Oh. Oh, no shield. No. It gives another thumbs up, and then also the question mark, but then a shrug. Oh. As if, like, never mind. Uh, what I mean is, they do dangerous things, and I can't stop them. It's always been this way, and I shouldn't think that it would ever change. I mean... <sighs> All I can do is be there. It gives you a smiley face. As if it understands what you mean. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to me. Thumbs up. Emran, Maeve, you're poking around at the squid? Sure are. Okay. What is it you want to know about the squid? Well, first of all, I want to know if there's any um, components that have SGM in them. Not in the squid. Interesting. Is it entirely mechanical? No. Uh, give me your crafts roll so you to try and take it apart. You need a good roll to take this apart because... You do not recognize this technology. Can I help with the fleshy bits? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll make a crafts. With a plus one? Is that how help works? Yes, it is. But don't put in a plus. Okay. So you've succeeded. You got a superb roll there. Not quite succeeded with style, but still very good. So you're able to dismantle the squid and sort of lay it out on the largest flat surface nearby, which is the piece of hull. Perfect. I brought my operating table with me. <laughs> and so you're sort of like uh, knolling the different parts of the squid as you take it apart. So everything's nicely organized. Uh, and I guess Maeve, you're cataloging these parts as they come out. Absolutely. What does that look like? Are you doing sketches or are you mm, like making notes? Both. Okay. So you have got the squid dismantled and laid out with all of its component parts. You can see that. In the center of it, there are some squishy bits that don't appear to be mechanical, but also don't look fully like human or animal bits that you've worked with before. And the the biggest part of it is the like sort of light bulb, not really light bulb, but the 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 pointy head thing that it has, which is uh, a little larger than a person. And it was the one that was glowing yellow and that was cracked when you first ran into this creature this thing, whatever it is, and there was some type of solution in it, but that all drained out before you got back to the ship. So it's just some residue along the inside of this broken container that was the head of this space squid thing. And the rest of it is a combination of materials that you don't quite recognize. They might be some type of ceramic. Cer ceramic? Yeah, it's saran wrap. <laughs> Uh, it might be some type of... <laughs> I knew it. This, this squid, this squinjili is really fresh. <laughs> but is it rental trap? Unfortunately not. So you, it looks like it might be a type of ceramic that you don't recognize. Or something like that. Wild. I don't know why, but I really want calamari now. <laughs> and that's a pretty constant state for me. Valid. Mm. Uh, can I try to scrape up whatever sort of fluid or solution is remaining in what used to be the head? All right. Let's see. Um, no, you don't have to roll for that. This is your job. Yeah, you scrape some of that into a container, I guess. It is, uh, at this point, it's the exposure to space has done a lot of bad stuff to it. So it's basically like flakes that you are scraping into a container. I hope it's not battery acid. It does not appear to be corroding your tools, though, yet, anyway. Oh, good. Matt, is it possible that Maeve and I could assume that the, that the exterior of the squid being 
was an exosuit in the same way that we were wearing suits, or is it like this entire being was the suit as well? Not like they're not separated. I think you'll need to investigate for that. Oh gosh, if it's wearing an exoscoot, then it's a dialect, and then that's horrible. I can take charge with the investigation if you want. And I can help you really, 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 really well. <laughs> I like your confidence. Do I add a plus one to that, or just roll it regularly? Uh, does Emran have investigate? As it turns out, you might be surprised to hear that he has lore. Okay, but not investigate. No, not this time. So unfortunately, you can't help with this because this is outside of things that you could have learned about. Okay, so you're going to need a great investigate roll. And you got that. Yes, you got an epic investigate roll, so that's well done. That is the best roll you could have gotten. Yay! And it succeeds with style. Years of being nosy. Yay! Yeah, you succeeded with style as well. You inv- Surely because Ebron helped? <laughs> yep. Yet he pokes at one of them and is like, I think this is an arm. Thanks, Emron. Possibly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You're the chosen one. All right. Uh, so from this, you're looking at the way the squishy bits were and are attached to the ceramic bits and the parts that might be circuitry and such. You get the impression that the squishy bits are a kind of computer or a kind of brain. Regardless, there's nothing else in here that looks like it would operate the rest of it. So the squishy bits by process of elimination must be what makes this thing go. Or some combination of the squishy bits and the essence that was in the bulb, which you don't have much opportunity to examine right now. You don't have the tools for that here. So it could it's not an exosuit, but it might be some type of combination of organic and biological, alternately some type of technology that is based on organic stuff rather than traditional computer stuff that you've been learning about. Did, did someone pick the synthesis ending? Um, yeah, every time. Obviously, that's the, that's the good one. <laughs> <laughs> The one good one. You got so much hate mail. All right. So <laughs> Reaper, Reaper babies forever. <laughs> so that's what you're able to determine. Are you still in your suit, Maeve? I am. I've just been flailing my arms at things I want to see. Okay. Your arms are still working, as is your upper body. It's just your lower body is uh, out of commission. Hmm. Would I be able to consult... My, my vast experience with science fiction novels and whatever else I might have picked up to see if I have any other references for this sort of biomech technology. Science fiction novels aren't permitted. So you could have maybe read some from Lean's library, one or two growing up, but they wouldn't have been about this kind of thing. Oh my gosh, I want to know what they what Lean had. It's if there's no science fiction, do they not have the laws of robotics? No, they don't. Well, at least the church does not that anyone knows of. Just gift them robots. <laughs> They're not forbidden to hurt them now. Yeah, could, possible long-term plan. The Trojan robot. Um, yeah, so that's what it is. Some kind of either biology-based technology or some type of high-level blending of technology and organics and it does not look like any part of a human body that you have seen or any part of an animal body that you have seen inside or out aside from being squishy do we remember when hub gave us the rundown on the alien species that humanity had encountered Mm pre-emergency does this register as anything similar to that it is closest to the andromedans but even then only because it had some type of containment suit and floated the Andromedans were, uh, as Maeve now knows firsthand, and as you were told by Hub, purely gas. And the uh, me too. Yeah, I know. And the the Centaurans weren't anything like this. So Emran just sort of nods 
as Maeve explains a lot of that to him and just like sets some flesh some fleshy bits down on like to where like the pile presumably of the rest of the quote unquote computer. Mm-hmm. And he looks up at Maeve in the suit and says, I have absolutely no idea what this is. And he wipes his hands on his pants. I don't either, but I want one. I don't know where to put it, but I want one. <laughs> you want to control the squid thing? Like what? Or you want to be inside one of these suits? Yes. One of your spiders sort of gives you what if a spider were more... Well, these spiders are, because they're so large, uh, they're, they're a little bit more like uh, animals. It gives you what might be seen as a almost wounded or jealous look at the level of desire you're showing for this thing that is not one of them for controlling it. I'll just telepathically nudge them. You were first in my heart. It rubs its pedipalps together in a what might be joy. You know, I used to be scared of spiders. These ones are like big dogs with eight legs and fangs, spinnerets, you know, dog stuff. Zonin. <laughs> yes, sir. How's your sulking? Uh, cathartic. Good, good. Uh, are, you, yeah. are you still wearing your helmet? Or uh, My Matt Damon head? I was going to correct myself. Which layers of helmet are you still wearing? Uh, I am, uh, well, of course, I had Matt Damon on underneath Matt Damon. Right. So uh, I'm going to take off Elysium Matt Damon. Okay. And uh, I'm actually going to take off um, my personal Matt Damon as well. Okay. Uh, as you're taking off Matt Damon, you can see that there is... Mm, let's see. What's that skill that I want you to roll? Yeah, give me a notice roll. Alrighty. And because you're in the middle of taking off this helmet, you'll want a notice roll that is fair. Oh, Okay. You got average, which is a step below fair. Wah, wah. I think in your um, depressed and traumatized state, you do not notice that thing that is going on in the... Okay. Yeah, that sounds accurate. Uh, Keva, you're back up there. You can see that the ship below you, you can see through the screens, through the visualizers, that you have re-entered the airspace above the domain of Gov. You see the huge walls <laughs> rising up below you. Ooh. Keva's going to like... Tense. Mm-hmm. Well, the ship is still moving pretty fast, but you can see below you the uh, the landscape rolling along. You're over, let's see, where would you be over? Sector, I want to say two right now. Yeah, you're over sector two at the moment, which means that you see below you uh, shorelines and water and stuff uh, because sector two is one of the sectors that's on the water, at least this part of sector two. Do I know that we're over sector two? The walls are currently allowing you to see the view, so if you look out, you can notice, yeah? I want to test my range. I'm going to reach out to the water bugs. Okay. You can sense life under the water, a lot of it. At this range, you can only sense them. And at this speed, it's difficult to maintain contact with anyone uh, for long enough to try and make contact, I'm going to say. That's okay. I just need to know that they're there. Yep, you can sense, you know, uh, crustaceans, various arthropods down there. Crab people. Mm-hmm. Those ones. Someday they will rule Sector 2. <laughs> it's interesting because the perceptions that you get as your mind, touch, as your mind touches theirs is uh, different from what you have experienced so far with other insects it's as if they have a different perspective and therefore their i don't want to say minds necessarily therefore their systems work differently than those that you've interacted with thus far under the sea under the sea sorry <laughs> yeah there's a, a little band playing you know it's very nice. Their first quest will be to bring me Ariel's fork. <laughs> All right. As you fly over the narrowing wedge of Sector 2, you can see that the settlements get larger the closer you get towards City 2. You fly over City 2, you can see the spire. And then 
After that, you're flying over the airspace of Bodhi in Sector 1. And Bodhi, as you know, is a pretty large city. It is the largest city that uh, exists here in the station, as far as anyone knows, and is the capital of Gov's domain and has that huge spire in the middle of it that is the central church of Gov. This is where last time on your way here, you were attacked briefly. Yes. So I think noticing that, Emrin walks over to a part of the passenger area where he can interface with the ship's circuitry. The circuitry is there. You can read it. Uh. You can see through the ship. I just uh, want to want to do a quick scan and a radial to see if we're being missiled again. Okay. Let's see. So that would be for you. We're going to open up the 88 Express character sheet here, and you're going to add the systems rating to your notice rating and roll that. Perfect. So that'll be, in this case, plus two to your notice roll. Okay. Notice five. Being me superb, I believe. Mm -hmm. You got what you needed. So you are able to do this scan, and the scan shows you uh, through the ship's systems. Well, actually, you can't see this with the way that you see things, but uh, you can see that it is trying to show you something, but you cannot see the display because it's holographic, and your way of seeing doesn't allow you to see holograms. That's true. But someone else could see it if you showed them that display. I think knowing that, Emran would try to shunt the image either to like a projector in the passenger room or up to the cabin where it would matter. Okay. It goes to both of those places. So in the middle of the passenger area, there's a large hollow projection screen that opens up and you can see a fairly detailed view of Bodhi, or the part of Bodhi that you're flying over. And it has these sort of spots on it that are brighter than others. Not very many. But as you are flying over Bodhi, you see that there are in total seven of these brighter spots. Currently, well, actually, just uh, give me a second here. Uh, What's he got there? Right. Just going to make a roll here and double check something with my other character sheet. Where are you? For a peek behind the curtain, Matt let us know earlier that... uh... He had statted several other vehicles, and I'm sure that won't yeah. <laughs> play into this at all. This, and everything is fine. My poor baby. The ship is now my baby, I should mention. Okay. So those seven don't move, but while the scan is completing, an eighth larger bright spot appears in the city. And it is now getting bigger. A few moments later, Keva, there is an alert put up on your screen. It says, Okay. Incoming. Crap. Okay, shields. Okay. The shields go on and light up. The other seven lights begin moving as well. And evasive maneuvers. Let me just... Because the other seven are moving too, I'm just going to put them on there. Emran says aloud, anyone want to clue me in on what I'm showing you here? Is he near enough for Keva to hear him say that? You can hear him through the ship, yeah. Okay. We've got a bunch of ships on our tail. Emran just nods quietly and um, wants to try and give the engines a bit of juice if he can. Or the shields, whichever I think I can interface with. All right. Uh, is anyone looking out the windows at this point? Zone and Maeve, what are you doing? I want to secure the squid's fleshy bits better, ideally to my person, and have one of the spiders try to like bundle up the mechanical stuff in some web. Okay. One of the spiders begins spinning out some web and wrapping up the mechanical bits, and you are moving the fleshy bits into, I guess, containers, bags? Whatever it is that this suit has on it. Okay. I guess sample containers. Would make sense. Zonin? I'd like to check out the windows, yeah. You look out of the window, and you see, flying up towards you, seven 
auditor suits that are, they're not flying. They can't do that, but they are making these huge leaps up the central spire of Bodhi. And it looks like they're going to make a leap off the top of the spire towards you when they get there. Oh, Kevin. And there is something else coming that is flying, but it is slow. Okay. I say, if I shout, Kevin can hear me. If you speak, Kevin can hear you. The, sh- the ship's not that big. It's a bus. Yeah, but it's on. You know, sometimes buses are really loud. Yeah. Imagine, imagine like two greyhounds taped together side by side. <laughs> okay. I imagine the bus. Greyhound. Yeah, the bus, not the dog. Someone yeah. hearing a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's a dog. There are no dogs. That's the space dog. He's letting us know that combat has been initiated. Yeah, that's the ship. I'm sorry. She? She? The, the dog announcer. I, uh, I say to Keva in an appropriate volume, looks like we're going to have company. And can she see the, the thing following us as auditors? You can see the uh, ship opens helpfully for you a view hollow that shows the seven auditors making their way up the spire. Okay. Uh, everyone buckle up. And she's like going to try to get this ship to be doing like spinning so that if they tried to grab on, they won't be able to because it's spinning. Okay. Emron buckles up. Are we finally doing barrel rolls? Okay. Uh, so I think this would be a good time for a challenge. Oh, no. Clearly, the only solution here is for you to form the shield into the shape of a hand, hold it out, and shout, Swiper, no swiping, over the loudspeakers. <laughs> Ugh. That vibes. All right. Yeah, but she has the shield on, too. Yeah. So for this challenge, you are trying to what, get out of range of the auditors? Uh, make it so that the auditors could not grab on if they try. Okay. So I think this is going to take four checks, four skills here. One of you who knows stuff about auditors is going to need to do a lore to figure out how high the auditors and how far they can jump. I, I can take that one. Do you know a lot about auditors? I mean, I, I did some analysis, but we were fighting them. Okay. And someone is going to need to do a drive to get the ship moving in the appropriate direction. <laughs> You'd think I would have that skill. Yeah, I think it probably will have to be you regardless. Okay. And let's see here. Someone's going to have to do a stealth to figure out how to get the ship less visible so that the auditors can't just jump at you again once you get out of range. And someone is going to have to is going to have to do notice to keep your eye on the auditors and the other thing to make sure that your plan is working. Hey Zone, and how's your stealth? As good as my notice, which is average. Okay, well, I can take notice because I have a fair. Okay, I'll stealth it up. Now, this is a tricky situation that you are in, so each one of you is going to have to make a good roll in order for this to succeed. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, so... Matt, do I still get the... Sorry, do I still get the sensors? If you are doing notice, then you get the sensors. Anyone doing notice or drive the ship stuff, you get sensor. You get the ship bonus for that. Okay, Drive, you would add either thrust or maneuvers, depending on if you're maneuvering or going fast. And notice you would get the systems. Well, I said Keva was spinning the ship. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with only plus one. Okay. So Maeve, you've nailed your lore skill. You got exactly a great on it, so that's good. Emran, your notice, you got a five. So you made it over the good. Perfect. Zonin, your stealth roll did not quite make it. You got a fair. And Keva, you rolled a one on your maneuvers. So some parts of this are going well. Yeah. Yeah, I might 
try to re-roll uh, because... I mean, you just need to add two for the good, so if, if you were going to re-roll, you could just spend the one. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to spend a point. Okay, what are you going to use? Oh, shoot, I forgot about that part. Uh... Oh, I stared death in the face. De- out of desperation for not having to face death a second time, I uh, take ex- go to extra lengths to make this happen. Okay, what are the extra lengths you're going to? Give in mind, you also have a computer hat sitting there if you need any extra help. Oh, yeah, but that guy, he's so pro-auditor. <laughs> he is. It's like every conversation's a Thanksgiving dinner, you know? Yeah, I know. Just convince him that he owes them money. All right, um, I'll uh, pop on the old Damon. No, you do not have to. I'm just asking, what are the extra lengths that you go to? Uh, no, I would consult with Matt Damon, despite not wanting to. That's my extra length. Oh, all right. Boss, boss, we got a message. Oh, uh, do tell. Someone's been trying to contact us over the wave. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, um, I owe those guys money. So uh, we're trying to lay low. Can you give me a hand here so we can uh, slip under the radar? Uh, I can try. Let's see. Uh, don't connect me to the ship again, though, please. No more of that. Let's see what we got. Oh, I know you don't like that. Available to us. Oh, we got some of those, I guess, heretical auditors. That's a lot of them. Okay. Things are going pretty bad, eh? For the church? Yeah, I mean, I, no, I mean, they're probably fine. It's just a, it's just a thing where I owe them money. You don't have, you don't have to worry about it. Well, okay. Uh, okay, so what we can do... That field is real bright. Maybe we could... All right, I see up ahead there's some clouds. If we can maneuver into those, we should be able to make ourselves a little bit less visible and make it harder for them to see us. That's great. All right, uh, do you want this message? Oh, yeah, just uh, put that button on the back burner. Uh, I'll address it later. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> and then the, uh, Matt Damon's voice dissolves into static. And you start hearing a different voice. Are you keeping your helmet on? Yes, most certainly. Is this Zonin? Uh, this is a Zonin. Wonderful. Please tell your companions to surrender so that I don't have to kill all of you. That would be really inconvenient. I, I think you might have me confused with another Zonin, a different Zonin. That's very funny, Zonin Chan. Who is still alive up there? Is Maeve around? Oh, I've, I don't know any Maves. Uh huh. You're going to make this difficult for me? Well, I mean, no more difficult than you're making it for me. I mean, this is a classic case of mistaken identity. Very well. You had your opportunity. And the voice uh, returns to static, and then Matt Damon's voice went like, oh, what the heck was that? Oh, my goodness. Ah. Somebody has override control. Oh, uh, Matt Damon, that's not fair. You should, have, you should have complete control. How can I help you make that not happen again? Emron's ears perk up when he says, um, you should have complete control. Uh, He's like, is someone... Like, Zonin, is someone talking to you? Oh, no, uh, Matt Damon's just having a, a, a hissy fit. Uh, Zonin, it's getting very hot in this helmet. And Matt Damon is saying, boss, 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 get out. I ripped the helmet off. Okay, give me your athletics. You need to make a good roll. Emron can rush over. He would help. Okay, did you add one for Emron's help? I did not. Okay. It's still not a good roll. Oh, okay. I'll invoke a, a second fate, fate point then to plus two. And I'll invoke a hat for any occasion. In that, in the occasion of living, uh, the absence of a hat is the perfect hat. Oh, that makes a certain amount of sense. Okay. So mark down your roll. As you are pulling the helmet off, you can feel it burning away some of your uh, bandana on the top of your head. Somebody has used their override to activate the kill switch in this helmet. 
Well, that is just not very nice. Uh, does he like make an audible like? Ugh! You can probably smell burned hair at the least. Yeah, yeah. Kev is gonna be like, "What was that?" Oh, uh, just nothing. Matt Damon's acting up. Um, just let's focus on getting away from these auditors. I think that stupid helmet finally tried to kill him. What? Keva, what are you doing? Right, so uh, now we can figure out this math here. So it was only a one for the maneuvers. Yep. And with a, would a plus two make, that would make it three. Would that be good enough or not? So Three would be good, which was the level that you had to hit. Okay, so I'm going to invoke, if you hurt my friend, I'll hurt you. because, or, or, well, just team parent in general, honestly, because... I think that makes more sense. Yeah. She can't let her poor people get hurt. Mm-hmm. So Keva, with a renewed burst of determination, uh, puts the ship into a spin, taking it away into the clouds. The auditors, as they are leaping, start to fall short. Uh, Emran, you can see that they are plummeting towards the ground. Uh, none of the auditors has been able to catch you. So good job, everybody. Teamwork. Yay. Makes I don't think... the dream work. It, it sure does. Uh, unfortunately, the eighth thing, uh, you haven't lost that one. Mm-mm. And it is still pursuing you because it appears to have the ability to actually fly. I'm like the auditors, which can just do good jumpies. Can I get a visual on it? You can certainly do so. It is not hiding. You can see it is coming up behind you. It does not appear to be quite as fast as you right now, but it is a large suit about... You know the difference in size between Iron Man's regular armor and Buster armor? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's like that. It's slightly bigger than the Hulkbuster armor style. Uh, it looks like it is very sort of thick on the top, and it has four arms, two legs. Two of the arms are extremely large and coming out of its back, and the other two are for the suit regular sized arms. It also has a pair of wings and two, you would assume, engines that are propelling it into the sky after you. It has two uh, white sensors set into a cone-shaped head. So it looks like, for you at home, sort of a combination of a jet fighter and like a real thick robot. Can you spell thick real quick? You know which one (laughs) I mean. Okay. Q-U-E, man. (laughs) Q-U-E. It's not the one that I was about to type into chat. (laughs) Yeah. Imagine, like, the the bomber version of an auditor's fighter jet look. Ugh. Emran brings it up on the hollow displays. That thing is chasing us? Sorry. Yes, it is. (laughs) Like, yes. (laughs) Emran just says very calmly, yes. Oh, no. And then uh, she's going to be like, I don't think we can outrun that. Or outmaneuver at that. You might be able to. I mean, um, you don't have weapons, and it's not clear if this thing does or not yet. But it's coming for you. It is gradually gaining at the moment because you're doing maneuvers. Okay, well, now that we've been able to shake off the, the auditors, Keva's going to try to use that speed, which is plus three for thrust, and then... Okay, let me roll that. Hey. Yeah, okay. It's pretty great. All right, so you got a four there, and let's see how their thrust does. Okay. The oh. The machines... Dear, dear Lord. Uh, the machine's engines aren't as powerful as those on the Express, but it appears that whoever is inside knows how to get everything possible out of them. So this thing is overtaking you, and it hasn't caught up to you yet. I'm going to move uh, your ship a bit. 
on the map here, just so we have a visual representation. But this uh, thing that's coming after you is it's catching up right now. 